Hi there, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer, and today I have Peak Hole Card Designs. Actually, I'm not really sure what to call these. That was the best name I could think of. But these are cards that have windows that you can completely see through. It makes for a fun, unique card design and something that looks really cool on display. Now, a couple of my examples have foiling on acetate, but one does not. If you do not have foiling, I will give you lots of different options on how to do this technique and different ways to get different looks. So I'm hoping that this is something you'll try with supplies you have. So here's a look at the first card that we're gonna make. I feel like it's best to see the final card before we get started. Notice that you can completely see through that heart window and the window has gorgeous foil on it. Again, if you don't have foil, don't worry. I'll give you some other suggestions. Now, when you open up the card, there is room on the bottom for your personal message and you can add another greeting on the inside. So let's get started with this one. I'll do the foiling first. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Folk Art Floral Medallion. I love the style of this plate. I was really excited when I saw it and it can be used for so many different ways. Today, I'm using it to foil on heat resistant acetate. I'll tape the plate onto the acetate, creating a little hinge. And under that, I will slide some Spellbinders Glimmer Foil. This is the um, gold like iridescent that I like so much. I'll flip this over and place it onto my Glimmer Foil machine, which is warmed up and ready to go. After I place it on there, I'll put the plates on top, press the timer, and when the timer is done flashing, I'll give it like another minute. We're foiling on acetate, so I wanna give it a little bit more time to warm up. I will then take out all the plates and run it through my platinum die cut machine. And this will apply the pressure that will transfer that foil. If you have a different die cut machine, there are other foil machines out there. You'll want to check with your manufacturer. All right, so now I'll take that off and look at this beautiful foil I have on that heat resistant acetate. So gorgeous and it looks great on the back too. So now I'm gonna repeat that process one more time and mention that you might want to try a shim in there, a cardstock shim, if you're not getting good foiling on your acetate. I found I didn't need it, but this is a different foil machine that I used in the past. I've, I've just gotten a new one and in, on my old one, I needed that shim. So you might wanna play around with it. Now as for acetate, I use Simon Says Stamp Heat Resistant Acetate. If you're unsure if your acetate is heat resistant, give it a try. If it warps, you know you don't have a heat resistant version and you wanna make sure you do have one so that you can do foiling. Now another option here if you do not have foil is to do heat embossing. You could do a gold heat embossed image on heat resistant acetate also. I'll link to a video that shows heat embossing on acetate here on the top right if you want to try that out instead. All right, now let's create this card base that has that peak hole window. I'm starting with two pieces of cardstock that are cut to be four by five and a quarter inches. One of these will go on the front and one will go on the inside of the card. I'm placing a large heart die towards the top center. You could use a circle, rectangle, whatever shape you want here. I'm using my Empress die cut machine today. You could use whatever you want. But when I run this through, I'm gonna hold both of those pieces of cardstock together, lining them up. That way the heart will cut through both layers and I have that heart window in the exact same position on both pieces. That will really help with the final card design. All right, now I'm taking one of those pieces and I'm lining it on the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. Once I have it lined up, I will take that same heart die and place it into that window. It'll pop in place with the window we've already cut and I'll put some tape on there so that it'll stay still. I'll run this through my die cut machine and now it will cut a heart into the front of our note card in the exact same place. So really this is all about cutting a heart in the same place through all of these layers. Now the last heart we need to cut is the inside of the card. So I'm closing the card popping the heart in the place into the front window, run that through, and now we have the heart in all of these layers. The light blue piece will go on the inside, the dark blue will go on the front. All right, now let's add a little interest to that front piece. I'm using the Gina K Design Swiss Dot Embossing Folder. I use this one a lot. I did mist my cardstock with a bit of water first to get a good impression. 
I will then run that through my die cut machine as I would a regular embossing folder. And there we have a little interest on that background. I wanted those dots to stand out a little bit more. So I'm using white pigment ink and a brayer and I'm lightly rolling over my background. This will apply white ink just to the raised dots. If you go very light, you can go on just the raised areas and it makes the dots stand out more. If you wanted to, you could use a darker blue ink and have darker dots. All right, so now I have my two foiled pieces from before and I need to trim them down so that I can put them into these windows and the extra acetate won't be hanging off. So I'm just holding it over the window where I want it to be positioned and I'm putting some Sharpie marks where I can cut and trim off the extra acetate. Now I want both of these pieces to be trimmed down so I'm gonna hold them together lining up the foiling, and then just cut along those black Sharpie lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will be covering all of that up. Okay, now it's time to adhere this window to the front of our card. So this is our note card that's closed. And I'm putting a bit of ultra sticky double-sided tape from Altenew around the window. Now this is uh, a tape that I hadn't used really before and I'm really liking it. Uh, I actually ran out of the thinner version, so I am using the thicker version today. You'll see that I'll end up cutting some of it to be more narrow. All right, so I'm adhering one of those foil pieces right there on the front of the card. Now I have our background that we created with the heart window. I'm putting quite a bit of tape around this because it has that texture to it. I want to be sure that it stays stuck to the front. You could use liquid adhesive here if you prefer. I will place that on the front of my card, making sure that the heart window lines up. Now let's add the foil window to the inside of the card. I'll put tape around the window opening. Now before I lay that foiled acetate piece down, I wanna make sure the foil pattern on the front window lines up with this. So I'll hold it behind the front window, line up the foiling. It's really easy to line up. Then while holding it there, I'll close the card and press that inside acetate piece onto that exposed adhesive. Now I'll just open it and there now my foil window is lined up. So now we just need to adhere that light blue piece to the inside. This time I switched to liquid adhesive just to save a little bit of time. I like to use double-sided tape with acetate simply because I don't have to wait for it to dry. It's really helpful just to use double-sided tape, but at this point liquid adhesive works great. So now we have that foil window that lines up on the front and the inside, and I just love that look. All right, now it's time to add a sentiment. I'm using an old favorite of mine, the Simon Says Stamp Big Thanks die. I did the shadow from white cardstock and the word thanks from a dark teal colored cardstock. I glued one onto the inside of the card. Then I am making another to glue on the front of the card. I glued the one on the inside first because it's easier to line them up this way. Now I can just put this one on the front, lining it up with the thanks on the inside. So we have a sentiment on the outside and the inside. Now I'm putting a white thanks shadow die cut on the um, back of the front of the card, just so you don't see the adhesive through. You could definitely skip that layer if you want. And now I'll put one on the back of the card entirely. So this one has glue on the front of it. I'll just lay it there just to give it a clean look. I think if I did this card again, I would skip those two uh, Thanks Shadow die cuts. I really don't think they're necessary, but I wanted to show you in case you have a bigger, more solid die cut. Now, in my next example, I'll show you an alternative to putting the same die cut on the front of the card and the inside. We'll change it up with our next example. Now, the last step I did was add a little shimmer to the Thanks die cut on the front using my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen. So let's take a closer look at the completed card. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and it has that foil window that you can see completely through, creating kind of like a peak hole. Now there is room to write a personal message on the inside. If you want more room for a personal message on the inside, you could definitely um, use a smaller window die. I used a heart here. You could use like an oval or rectangle, something a bit smaller if you prefer more room on the inside. I just really think this stands up nicely on display with all of the shine. But keep in mind, if you don't have acetate that you can heat emboss on or foil on, you could just use acetate without it, and I'll have an example later in this video.
But first, let's do another. I really liked this design. This time I'm using a bigger heart die and I changed up the sentiment, how I did the sentiment on the inside and the front of the card. So let's start by creating the front of this card. I did kind of an ombre look with some texture to it. Now I've already created my note card and panels with the heart window, just like I did last time, but this time I used a bigger heart die. So this is the blue piece that will be the front of our card, and I am using Simon Says Stamp uh, saturated inks in the cadet and royal colors to add dark ink towards the top of the panel. Then I will place it into a Simon Says Stamp spun glass 3D embossing folder and run that through my die cut machine. Uh, for this, I just used the shim, my main platform, and two pieces of scrap cardstock, and they gave me the right sandwich. I wanted that texture to stand out a bit more, so I'm again using that trick of applying a light amount of white pigment ink with a brayer over the raised areas. I just think that really makes the pattern stand out more. As I mentioned before, I've already cut all the panels and note cards with the heart window. I did that off screen in the exact same way I did the last card. However, this time I made my card a little bit wider. It's four and a half inches wide because I used a larger heart die for the window. So the window on this card is bigger than last time. The other change that I made is the foil. This time I used a silver iridescent foil. This is the prism from Spellbinders. Other than that, this card is assembled just like the last one. For a sentiment, I'm using this new awesome thanks die set from Simon Says Stamp. There's a shadow and the word thanks. I wanted the word thanks to be a dark blue that would match our background. So I'm using the royal ink and pressing it onto white cardstock direct to paper and then die cutting thanks from that. I glued that thanks die cut onto a white shadow die cut and I'm adhering that to the front of our large foil window. Now this is a bigger window and a bigger die that says thanks. So you can see that adhesive through the window. So I am taking another Thanks White Shadow die cut and gluing it to the back of that. So it just looks nice on the inside. You could totally skip that if you prefer. All right, now we need a sentiment on the inside. I thought I would do a little blue heart. I inked it with the same blue ink so it would match the front. And I glued it so you wouldn't see it when the uh, card is closed. So it's glued right to the window. Then I stamped with all my heart from that stamp set you see up there in the top right. I'll show you a closer look later. I stamped that with blue ink on a white cardstock strip and I added that on top. And all of that is glued down with the double-sided tape. I finished it off by adding a little bit of shimmer on top of the word thanks. Now, as I mentioned, this card is a little bit wider than normal. So it's four and a half inches wide and five and a half inches tall. I just did that again to have a bigger heart window. Because it's wider, I'm using an A6 envelope. I like that for using a little bit different card size or having things hang off. I'll link to A6 envelopes below in my YouTube description. So here's a look at the completed card. You can see how the foil lines up. This time it's a silver iridescent foil. Then we have that fun texture on the front and that little hidden sentiment on the inside. I really love the look of that window, so I thought using a bigger heart window would be even better. All right, now my final example doesn't do any foiling on the acetate, but it's still a see-through card. This is a great one because you can use any clear packaging, any clear acetate material you may have, something recycled for this window effect. So you should be able to do this with supplies that you have. So with this card, the shadow for the word hello is the window, and the word hello is just floating at the center of it. It's on the inside and the outside, but I did stamp an additional greeting on the inside. So let's get started with this one. I had a great time making this background. This background was so fast to do. So what I did is I took some Tim Holtz watercolor paper and I'm placing it into my Misty stamping tool. I'll be stamping this beautiful new peony background stamp onto it. This stamp is gorgeous. Now you could color this, but I'm not great at coloring. So I'm going to do a fun inking technique that is really fast. I've used my anti-static powder tool and now I'm inking up the stamp with Versamark ink. 
Now I want to be sure I got a great stamped image here and I can't really see the Versamark ink, so I will double stamp it just to make sure that we transfer a lot of ink. Then we'll sprinkle on some clear embossing powder. You could definitely use white embossing powder here too. Honestly, when I filmed this part, I thought I was going to iron off the embossing powder and that's why I chose clear, but I ended up not doing the iron off technique. By the way, if you're interested in an iron off technique, it gives a cool look. I will link to a video up here on the top right. Okay, so now I am heat setting that image on the white cardstock. Now to add color over this, I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain Sprays. These are amazing. You just spray it on, a little goes a long way, and this has beautiful shine to it. I chose to use three colors and just do two or three sprays in different areas of each color. And then I will spray water on it and I'll let the water do the work for me. This will dry, giving the most beautiful result. Now before it dries, it is gonna look like a hot mess. But I tell you, most inky techniques look like a mess before they look great. So just give it some time to dry by setting it aside. So here at the end, I'm spraying a good amount of water on there so that the colors all work together and blend. All right, I'll set that aside and I'll actually do this again. I wanted two backgrounds done. So I did another heat emboss panel and did the spraying again. After giving that some time to dry, you can see the beautiful results. Now a little bit of that color that we sprayed on top will dry on top of our white embossing. I do want to remove that so my white is bright white, so I just gently wipe it off with a, uh, with a baby wipe. You don't wanna do too much because you don't wanna remove color and shine from the background. All right, so now this is almost dry. I'm gonna heat set it to make sure it's completely dry and by heat setting it again, the embossing powder will become shiny again in case it became dull when you put the inks over top. I then trimmed one of these down to be four by five and a quarter inches, and then I set the other background aside for a future card. Now at this point, I was trying to decide what sentiment to do as a window, and I wanted to show you some options. I ended up doing a die cut window, but I was considering doing a foil sentiment there. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Elegantly Modern Greeting Stamp Set, Foil Plate Set, and Die Set. You can mix and match these and use them however you want. I was going to use one of these dies to cut a window and then foil the sentiment on the acetate or heat emboss it on the acetate. But I changed my mind. I felt like the window would be too small. These were a little bit too small for this particular technique, but I wanted to show you this would be an option. I love the style of these sets. Because this is bigger, I chose to use the Simons' Stamp Hello Die Set. Notice that the Hello Die does some embossing on the that die cut. I just love that look. So I will die cut hello from the top center of this panel. After I've cut hello, I will take the shadow die, place it around that opening on the front panel, tape that down, run that through my die cut machine. And now I know everything's centered and I have this hello die cut that is really fun. I could use it on the inside and I have the negative space I could use on another card. All right, so now we need to get our windows lined up. I have another white panel cut to the same size, four by five and a quarter inches. I'm laying it behind our panel where we've cut the window, line up that shadow die, and run that through our die cut machine. This will cut the same hole in the same position on that white cardstock piece. Now it didn't cut completely through because I'm using heavyweight cardstock. So I just line up the die with the part that's partially cut and run it through my machine again. No problem at all. So these pieces are cut to the same size with the window in the same place. Now I have a top folding white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm taking one of those backgrounds with the window already cut, lining it up in the center, laying the die right into that opening and taping it in place. Then I'll run that through our die cut machine. This will cut the window on the front of our card. Again, it's all about lining it up so you have the window in the same place on all of the layers of your card. It really is easy to do once you've done it once or twice. All right, now that didn't cut all the way because again, I'm using really heavyweight cardstock. So I will just take the die, line it up into where it's partially cut and run it through again. 
I did close my card so that it would already start to cut through to the inside of the card in the same place. So now I just open up my card, kind of pop it into what's partially cut, run that through again, and now we have a window in all layers. Now at this point, I changed my mind. The panel on the inside, instead of having it white, I decided to go with a light blue. So I recut a piece same way as the white one I just showed you, but I did it in blue. So I'm gonna do a switch to that. Sorry I made that switch, but I thought that pop of color on the inside was nice. So there are the two pieces. I won't use the white. Instead, I'll use the blue on the inside. Now we need some acetate to go over our window. I'm cutting it to be just bigger than our shadow die, and this is recycled packaging that I had. So you can use anything here. It could even be thin, clear material. It doesn't really matter. Not sure where this came from, but I have a drawer where I throw like recycled packaging that I can use on cards. I'm placing double-sided tape around the window on the front of our note card. I will then lay the piece of acetate that we just cut right on top of that window. After putting more double-sided tape on the front of that card, I will place our inky card panel, making sure to line up that window on the front. Because we did that trick where we lined up the windows, everything will come together very easily and nicely. Now I need another piece of acetate for the inside, so I will cut that, place some double-sided adhesive around the opening on the inside of our card, and then place the acetate over that adhesive. And finally, we can add that blue panel right on top, making sure the windows line up. Now I considered using this hello die cut that we cut from the background that we created on the inside, but I decided to save that for a different card instead, but know that is an option. All right, so I have cut hello from white cardstock and I will glue the first one into the inside window here so that when you open up the card, you'll still see the hello. I use liquid adhesive. Liquid adhesive moves and doesn't really want to dry right away on acetate, but it will dry. Just make sure you put something heavy on it and give it some time first. If you do not want to wait for something to dry when you glue onto acetate, put double-sided tape on the back of your cardstock first, then die cut it, and then it'll be like a sticker and you can just put it right onto the acetate. So I also glued hello on the front of the card and on, I have it on the inside. Now I want to hide that adhesive on the back side. Again, you could skip this. I just like that clean look. So I'm putting liquid adhesive here, lining up another Hello die cut on the back side of this acetate, and I will do so on the back of the card also. Again, you can skip that if you want to. For a little bit more sparkle, I'm adding a heart die cut from Altenew Glitter Cardstock. I love their colored glitter cardstock packs. I chose a blue that would match our background. I'm also using one of my most used dies, the Mini Hearts Party Die. This is great for cutting little heart die cuts to add as accents on your cards. I glued one heart to the inside and one heart on the front. That way everything lines up through the window and the person wouldn't know there's a hello and heart on the inside until they open it. So here is a look at the completed card. You can completely see through it. I did stamp Dear Friend on the inside using that same stamp set that I showed you earlier. Check out the shine from those mica stain sprays from Tim Holtz. I highly recommend them for fast, beautiful, shiny backgrounds. And you can see the pop of blue on the inside. So this is something you can do with a circle die, a heart die, shadow dies for words, lots of ways you can make this peak hole card design. I hope you will try it with supplies you have. If you want to see the supplies I used, I have them linked below in my YouTube description. And if you could, in the comments, leave some ideas on how you plan to try out this technique. If you also want to bookmark this video or these cards for future reference, you can head over to my blog. At the end here, I will link to a couple other related videos, and I will see you again very soon with another video. Take care.